Carol Roth here for Goldline. Today we're gonna chat about the consumer trends that will impact this year. The following content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice. It is being provided for informational purposes only. You should consider any investment based on your own financial position, risk tolerance, and other factors. Please consult your own advisors before making any decision to invest. The economy depends heavily on the consumer. Now that shouldn't be a surprise. The consumer typically accounts for about two thirds of the US economy. So how the consumer is feeling, as well as how they are performing financially, tells us a lot about what's ahead economically. The consumer has been keeping up with the Joneses and the Federal Reserve, but how long can that last? Well, let's consider some key consumer trends. First, we have the incredible shrinking balance sheet. Consumers as a group have had the benefit of strong balance sheets, both from the supply demand imbalance in the job market that favored workers, plus a ton of government stimulus. However, the personal balance sheets of Americans are starting to show some signs of trouble ahead. The personal saving rate, which measures the percentage of the disposable personal income that people are saving, continues to stay near historical lows. In addition to saving less each month, consumer savings in the bank are also being gobbled up. There was a high in what's called excess savings in the third quarter of 2021 that was around $2.3 trillion. A year later, that was down to around $1.5 trillion, and many economists and experts are expecting that amount to run out sometime mid this year. So if savings are shrinking, well, what about debt? Well, debt trends are unfortunately moving in the wrong direction as well. Overall, consumer debt has exploded, including credit card debt. In fact, despite increasing delinquency rates, the forecasters are not expecting consumers to stop credit card spending. TransUnion, for example, projects 14 million more credit cards will be issued this year than in 2019. Now, this is all going to create a headwind for the economy and also hit the wealth of individuals, leading Americans to tap their long-term wealth to help them pay for their near-term spending. CNN reported that, quote, a recent survey from Vanguard showed a concerning rise in hardship withdrawals or cash that workers are taking out of their employer retirement programs like 401k plans. And Fox Business noted that more people will be dipping into their home's equity to pay off high interest rate loans. Now this all creates this personal robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of scenario that could be made worse by further degradation in the labor market, the housing market, or the stock market. And one more key data point in terms of the consumer strength relates to car repos. NBC News reported that in recent months, the number of people behind on their car payments has been approaching pre-pandemic levels. Yikes! Well, on the somewhat good news front, housing is on a bit of more solid ground. The undersupply in housing that has kept prices generally elevated, even in the face of mortgage rates that are about double what they were last year at the same time. This has kept a sort of wealth effect on housing going for many Americans, maybe giving them a bit more confidence in terms of their spending. However, that means that people are sacrificing their personal wealth. So where does the consumer go from here? Well, with the Fed resolute in their battle to fight inflation, deteriorating personal balance sheets, and companies concerned about costs, it's likely this year will be a tough one for the U.S. and global economies. Savings depletion is critical to continue to watch. And well, if the labor market rolls over, it will all but guarantee a hard landing and be the catalyst for the shift in the consumer and the economy. It's been a slow undoing, but pay attention because when it breaks, things can shift very quickly. So what should you do? Well, in preparation, do your best to undertake some personal austerity. Cut unnecessary expenses, keep your powder dry, and live below your means. 
And if you haven't hedged your personal portfolio, or maybe you're concerned you haven't hedged enough, do look to hard assets, including gold, as a mechanism to do so. Now, if you need some help in sorting through all of that, please consider giving my friends at Goldline a call. They can help explain why diversifying with physical metals might be an appropriate choice for you. In fact, many experts recommend hedging up to 5 to 10% of your portfolio with gold and other alternative assets. In fact, if you call Goldline at 800-319-9533 or visit goldline.com, they have a special for their Betsy Ross Freedom Round, which was designed by me and is exclusively available through Goldline. With a qualified purchase, you get one copper Betsy Ross Freedom Round for free with every silver one purchased. Just mention the special offer, 800-319-9533 or goldline.com. The consumer has been willing to sacrifice their long-term wealth for short-term spending. That will neither work out well for them nor the economy long-term. Buck the trend, do not keep up with the Joneses, Keep up with your investments. I'm Carol Roth for Goldline. I'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this video are those of Carol Roth and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of Goldline or its parent company or affiliates. These views and opinions may have been previously disseminated in other media.